Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Unboxing and Stuff. Today we're going to be taking a look at the BF-TD 520 DMR UHF Handy Talkie. So we're going to go ahead and get into the box and see what all it comes with and some optional accessories. We're also going to do some power testing. We are going to go over the programming software on the computer, do some field tests, and then I will give you my final thoughts and overview to see if this radio may or may not be what you are looking for. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the box here. Set these additional accessories aside. And here we have the actual BF-TD 520 itself in the 400 to 480 megahertz model. We have a 2000 milliamp hour battery. We have our charging port. We have a US style cable plug. This is available in uh, any plug that meets your country's uh, standards. Here we have our UHF 400 to 470 antenna. And finally we have our belt clip and our strap. As you may know by now, I'm not a huge fan of straps, but we do like belt clips here. So I'm going to go ahead and put this sucker on. Okay, belt clips on. Now we're going to go ahead and put our battery in. And that just slides in like that and then squishes in. And it's all set. And here we have a little plastic we can take off. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the optional accessories that came with this radio. We have an earpiece. We have a PC programming cable. It has the Kenwood style pins. And then we have the optional speaker microphone which is the same two button style with the Kenwood plug on it. Okay, next we're gonna go ahead and discuss some of the specs and capabilities of this handy talkie. It is available in a few frequency ranges, one of which is VHF and 136 to 174 megahertz. It is also available in UHF 350 to 390 megahertz and UHF 400 to 480 megahertz. And finally, UHF 450 to 520 megahertz. This radio is capable of having up to 16 zones with up to 16 channels in each zone for a total of 256 channels. This radio is narrow and wideband channel spacing capable. It has three power modes with a high power of 5 watts, middle power of 3 watts, and low power of one watt. This is a DMR tier 2 and FM analog modulation capable radio. It has an IP54 rating and has a basic encryption capability. It has a lone worker mode and also has emergency alert functions. It is capable of digital and analog dual mode receive with analog and digital signals both on a single channel that can automatically switch back and forth for more efficient communications. Okay, so we're going to go over a quick overview of all the buttons and knobs on this radio. And so here on the top, we have our power and volume control knob. We have our 16 selector channel selection switch, an emergency button. Or we have our LED indicator light there. Push to talk button here on the side and two more programmable buttons. So between these three buttons, you have up to six options with long and short press. We have our mic there, right there in the front. On this side, we have our flip door with our two Kenwood style holes there for programming and accessories. And then we have obviously battery belt clip on the back with our little spot here for the lanyard should you choose to use it. So that is basic overview of this radio. There is no hand jamming programming or changing anything without any keypads or a screen. So let's go ahead and jump straight into power testing here on the bench. Okay, so we're all set up here on the test bench. We have our radio going into a, an adapter and cable going into our 200 watt digital watt meter here. 
Uh, keep in mind, I don't know how accurate this thing is at the very low power that these radios are putting out. Uh, and coming out of this, it's going in another cable and adapter into a 100 watt dummy load. So none of these tests will be done over the air. Okay, so we're going to go ahead in here and jump right into testing. So we're on DMR and we're going to start on low power on 400 megahertz. We see about half a watt there. Medium power. Medium, we're going to go. Three watts. High power. 5.4 watts. Okay, we're going to go to channel two. Which is the 446, and let's make sure we're on low power. Medium power, high power, low power. Alrighty. Point 0.2 watts. Medium power. 1.3 watts. High power. About 3 watts. And then we're going to go to channel 3. And low power. We're going to go ahead and start on low power. This is 480 megahertz. Medium power. 1.7. High power. 2.9. And then we'll go ahead and go to four. channel 4. Medium power, high power, low power. All right, low power, and this is the analog channel of 446. About 0.2 watts. Medium power. 1.3. High power. And 3 watts. Okay, here we are with the BFTD520 software, and as you can see on this top tab, just have frequency, serial number, and our firmware version. If you go under general settings, you get our device name, ID, repeater ID. You can make a password. Uh, this has the basic encryption, uh, static and dynamic, not uh, any of the AES-256 or anything like that. English language, you got your Vox and transmit durations, hang times, and such. Uh, LEDs reject and direct modes. And now you have uh, your tone alerts right down here. If you go to our button settings, as you see we have our three buttons here, our orange one, our button one and button two on the side, and you can have up to six options. Uh, you can set the length of the long press, like how long it takes to actually activate this, which is a 1000 milliseconds, so it should be one second. Uh, and then you have your short press, of course, and Here's the list, you can see a decent amount of options, not a ton, but uh, plenty to get a lot of stuff done. So here you have your short messages. You can see I have hello right in here, and uh, that is something you can populate if you're sending frequent uh, of the same messages, like, you know, hello, checking in, you know, everything's okay, whatever you might want. <clears throat> here we have our signaling systems. So, device disable, decode, and remote monitor, decode, remote monitor, duration. And then you have your work alone mode, so lone worker. Um, and we have, to, we have to respond within a certain amount of time, otherwise it'll turn on an alarm. Then we have our digital red alert. So you do have a digital alarm you can use. Uh, regular silent or silent with voice. And then, uh, as you can see, I have that off. We have our address list. So we have Simplex, which is our group 99 that we use. And here you can see our receive group list. I put the Simplex over in our, a member of our group. And then we have channels. So we have our zone one. And you can see I don't have most of the 16 channels populated at all, just because this is set up for testing. And I have my four uh, DMR and one analog frequencies. So we'll just take a look at the DMR 446, which is where we did our testing. <clears throat> and you can see everything's pretty standard, um, generally basic, not a, not a ton of extra stuff going on here. Um, 
you'll notice that I'm, once again don't have the scan list and everything's just really basic our receive group one simplex is our default address high power and then our timeout timer uh, you'll notice here com different than some of the other radios is you can't actually set the uh, <clears throat> encryption in this window it's actually just on that main page we looked at before and then we'll look down here at the analog channel and it's even more simple We've got our receive and our transmit with our PL codes or DPL options there, which we don't have any on right now. Power level, timeout timer. We're running wideband because we're doing ham stuff. Uh, and then uh, squelch just at a lower level. And then here I'll click down and you can see there also is digital compatible, digital compatible analog and analog compatible digital. So that's basically what these all look like. And then we have our scan here. In our scan list one, where you see all your channels that are available are here. And you can move them over, but as I normally don't do, I didn't build a scan group uh, on this particular radio. And then you have first priority channel, second, and transmit designated channel. So that is a brief overview of the BFTD 520 programming software. So let's go ahead and get out in the field and do some testing. Okay, here we are with the 520 and we're gonna go ahead and do our testing on a DMR channel for a long distance range test. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, testing one, two, three, three, two, one on the 520 on DMR. How do you copy? Okay, testing one, two, three, three, two, one on the 520 on DMR. How do you copy? I uh, copy you great nice clean digital audio full quieting uh, definitely louder audio levels than the than the analog but sounds great how do you copy me I uh, copy great nice clean so full quieting uh, definitely louder audio levels than the than the analog but sounds great how do you copy me uh, you're coming in okay. I can understand you a little bit garbled. Uh, I think we're having some issues with the weather, but uh, I am able to receive your traffic. Uh, you're coming in okay. I can understand you a little bit garbled. Uh, I think we're having some issues with the weather, but uh, I am able to receive your traffic. Copy that. Sounds like I'm getting you here better than you're getting me because you are full quieting sound great here. Copy that. Sounds like I'm getting you here better than you're getting me, because you are full quieting sound great here. Copy that. Let's go ahead and cut over to analog. All right, testing one, two, three, three, two, one on analog high power on our long distance test. How do you copy? Uh, I copy you, same as the previous analog test, uh, pretty clean audio, I can hear what you're saying, but there is that background layer of static. Uh, I copy you, same as the previous analog test, uh, pretty clean audio, I can hear what you're saying, but there is that background layer of static. Copy that, uh, yeah, I can actually hear you maybe even a touch better than the 512. Uh, definitely static there still, but your audio sounds real good. Okay, so here we are on the final thoughts for the BF-TD 520. And we're going to talk about kind of what I think about this thing, what I like, what I don't like. And then we're going to see kind of how you feel about it at the end, if this might be something that's right for you. So first off, let's talk about the feel of everything. Everything feels really nice. Like this probably it feels one of the closest to like actual like Motorola. Um, the the ridges on the back of the battery, very reminiscent of that. And the feel just in your hand is quite good. Um, all of the knobs and switches feel very good. The buttons are easy. You get a small tactile click when you use them. Um, feels pretty nice in the hand. It just feels like 
you know, you could bang this radio around and I think it would hold up quite nicely. Um, this is, does not have a screen or any buttons, so you can't do any programming or field changes. But that's okay for probably most people. If this was going to be a business radio or a radio that you just set up and hand to somebody and say, hey, this thing's ready to go, use channel one, here you go. Uh, you know, this could fill that role quite nicely. Uh, the fact that it's DMR and analog is nice on both fronts. The IP54 water rating and dust rating uh, means that, yeah, you can use it in inclement weather or in a dusty environment and it should hold up just fine. Uh, obviously, you don't want to be going swimming with this or dropping it in water because it's not rated to handle that. Uh, I do like the little door on the side here just to protect the, the two pins for programming and accessories. Uh, but yeah, it's got, a, it's got a very nice feel in the hand. Um, things I don't like really, this belt clip is just a, just a touch wobbly. Is it really an issue? Yeah, we'll find out. At this point, no, it's not. It still works just fine. But that's just something that I notice. Uh, but like I said, overall, it's just it's got a good form and function to it. Now, uh, as you guys saw there in the range test, this radio did the 34 mile clear line of sight range test just fine. Uh, and I was happy with the performance from inside of a vehicle. Uh, not bad at all. Nothing to complain about there. I think it it definitely works and that's really what matters uh, and the price point on this radio is rather inexpensive when you look across the board at different radio options so I think if you're looking for an inexpensive simple radio that the users have minimal uh, interaction with and ability to change or do things just want them to talk on it then this is really a good option for something like that uh, overall I do like this radio I think it's, it's pretty solid so if you're interested in learning any more about this radio, I will include a link to the Bellphone website where you can go and actually check this radio out and learn a little bit more about it. Um, I also will include links for all the peripherals that I use, the watt meter and the, all that stuff on the bench. So that way, if you wanted to do any of your own testing on stuff, that you could get a hold of that as well. But I think that about wraps up this review on this radio. So. If you guys liked it, make sure to like the video, share it with your friends or anybody who might be interested in something like this. Uh, but I think it wraps it up. So thank you very much for watching all the way through to the end. That does mean a lot and I appreciate that. And I look forward to doing some more radio reviews coming up in the future. So we will catch you on the next one.